In this video, I'm making three carbon fiber Ironman helmets and I will give them away. So make sure to subscribe now to enter the giveaway. My goal is to prove that we can do almost any project using an inexpensive 3D printer and composite materials and not having to use traditional methods like expensive mold making systems, CNC machines or other power tools that are often expensive or requires a lot of skill. It will make you save a ton of money on your projects, lower the risk of failure to almost zero and it will allow you to do almost any project you want at home and more importantly it will allow you to be more creative in your designs and make better things more easily. If you can do almost any project using a cheap 3D printer and composites then anyone can can learn to do these projects at home. We will compare our method to the method used to make these carbon fiber Ironman faceplates. His results are pretty good, but let's see how we can make it better using only 3D printed molds to reduce cost and improve the final results. It all starts by making the 3D design. It is always better to reduce to a minimum the number of parts and steps to minimize the risk of failure, but we want to make sure the part can also be demolded easily. Then I send the 3D models to a slicer to create the files for the 3D printer and let the 3D printer do all the work. Without 3D printing, this would be very time consuming and quite difficult to make for a beginner. After removing the supports, I assembled the mold to check if everything fits perfectly. I decided to cut this part of the mold in half to print it without support. I always try to avoid using support as much as possible to have better results. It is easy to hide the seams between each part of the mold. I will show you how later. I prepare the mold by first sanding it flat. Usually after sanding, I proceed to seal and release the mold. Remember how I said I didn't like using fillers in the previous video? Well, this time I used a ton of it. By the way, you should check the video if you haven't yet. I decided to use a ton of filler to see if we can have a good result this time. I'm sanding the surface flat again. It took me about 30 seconds to send this area, so at least it doesn't take too much time. Then I seal and release the mold. I'm making the first faceplate in fiberglass and paint it later in gold. After adding the layers of peel ply with this film and breather, I put it in the easy vacuum bagging system. And before demolding the part, I cut the excess fabric using a sharp knife. Now I can demold the part using a plastic wedge to not damage the surface of the mold. And I'm doing it slowly on on every edge. It's looking pretty good so far. You can see all the imperfections after adding a layer of primer. These imperfections come from the fabric used and the fact that the part is laid up by hand. If we use the resin infusion process instead, we would have fewer imperfections, but it is easy to correct that. Just a little of sanding and priming two or three times will hide most, if not all, of the imperfections. To make the carbon fiber faceplate, I do the same thing. I apply one layer of carbon fiber cut the excess and we use it to make the part stronger and stiffer. Then I add the release film and the breather and put it in the easy vacuum bag. The results came out pretty nice but not so much for the first one. I'm not sure what happened here. The weaves are way too deformed but the second one is just fine. To have a perfectly flat surface free of pinholes, you need to sand and add layers of clear coat or varnish multiple times. Now let's make the rest of the helmet. I decided to use this hybrid carbon fiber. It looks great, but it's not easy to work with it. You'll see why later. So I applied one layer of fabric and just like I did with the faceplate, I cut the excess and reuse it. This red fabric looks stunning before applying the epoxy resin. It's a shame that it ends up looking so dark when the resin is applied to it. On one side of the mold, I cut all the excess around the edges. On the other half of the mold, I left the area where the two halves of the mold are connected without epoxy resin. And I'm going to use this to join the two halves of the mold later. Here you can see the two halves of the mold ready to be assembled. Assembling them is very simple. The only thing you need to worry about is to avoid having the fabric stuck between the two halves of the mold. And it looks like I should have added more epoxy resin, but that's okay. I mix a fast 
curing hardener and epoxy resin and left it for around 10 to 15 minutes until the epoxy resin is very viscous. I'm using a simple wood stick and applied resin. As I said before, this hardwood carbon is not easy to use. You can see on the edges that despite using a super sharp knife, the cut is not clean at all. And sanding the surface is even worse. If you sand too far, usually with a carbon fiber fabric, you still have room for mistakes and it doesn't show up that much at the end. It's even hard to see. This fabric gives you very little room for mistakes and if you sand too much, you will end up with a very bad surface finish. I repeated the same steps for the blue helmet and the full carbon helmet. Then I painted the blue and red helmet with grey paint and the full carbon fiber helmet with black paint. To make the eyes, no need for a special tool, just a drill, cutting pliers and a metal file will do the job. One layer of varnish gives a good enough look for me, but you could still sand it and add more layers to have a perfect surface finish. Now I'm going to add the lights, they are very flexible and you can see through them even with the light turned on. They can easily be added using this 3D printed part that I made. I'm going to hot glue this part on the faceplate. Finally, I need to attach the faceplate to the helmet. At first, I wanted to join them permanently, but I may make a different faceplate that can open and close with a small electric motor. So instead, I will join them using these powerful little magnets. And to do that, it's super easy. I 3D printed these parts and I'm hot gluing one of the two magnets to one side and the other magnet is glued to the other small 3D printed part. These little magnets are powerful so I will only need three of these to make it work. Before adding them we need to position the faceplate on the helmet. At first I wanted to use the 3D printed mold but masking tape works just fine. I'm gluing one 3D printed part to the helmet and I glue the other 3D printed part to the faceplate and I'm repeating this step another two times. The only thing I don't like about hot glue is that it's not easy to apply it precisely. If you add too much glue, at least it is possible to remove it, so it's no big deal. These three little magnets are holding the faceplate nicely. Now I'm adding the lights by simply sliding them in the 3D printed part. And the battery pack is assembled to the faceplate using another 3D printed part and hot glue. The goal was to make a strong and lightweight helmet using only a 3D printer and composite materials. Of course, you can easily design your own helmets and add all the reinforcements to make the helmet as strong as you want. As you can see, we can achieve great results with very little material and even a complete beginner can do it. And if we compare the tools and materials used in our method to the tools used in traditional methods, you can see why using our method is better. To enter the giveaway, all you have to do is subscribe to my YouTube channel and leave any comments.